All right, so after a historic move in the markets yesterday, one that we were kind of looking for in Monday's Market Outlook video, um, today was more of a battle, a tug-of-war between the bulls and the bears. And we're going to break that down. We're going to compare today's move to what we saw in October of 2008 to see how these real steep moves to the downside get rectified and how the reversal occurs and to see what stage we are in that reversal now uh, and how to respond to that. So that's what I'm going to break down in today's video. Uh, we're going to talk about what's been driving this little move up the last couple of days and what that means in terms and 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 what other signs that there may be more uh, of a bounce to the upside um, or whether or not we'll, we'll uh, hit this resistance in the short term now, kind of like what everybody's expecting us to, uh, including uh, kind of what we've been talking about. So I'm going to break all that down in today's video. Uh, and then our trade idea is going to be a stock uh, that's hitting its own resistance level and might be rolling over on its own. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, March the 25th, 2020. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, well, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the Market Forecast Indicator. Now, on Monday, I mentioned the, the idea that you know, there's going to be light green shading, that it's, you know, it's rare to get long periods of time with dark pink shading. It's usually broken up. Uh, it's broken up like this. You know, the red line stays there throughout the whole period, but there's still light green shadings. And sometimes the red line might be broken up with a yellow line, um, right? So we're probably not going to get a yellow line anytime soon because we're so far below the moving average. But a good chance that we'll get light green shading here. Uh, you notice in the light green shadings don't last very long. We already had one right there. Um, and I mentioned before, you know, the last time we had this, we went from um, here. Sorry, I keep forgetting to snap these lines here. Um, so last time we got to the 50% retracement uh, when we bounced up for the light green shading, we had a 50% move of of the dark pink shading move, right? The move that created the the line well so that was that one now you say okay well what about from here from that high down to this low point you can see we've already gotten to the 38 percent level if not the uh, you know potentially the 50 the 50 percent which is that 266 on SPY uh, around to um, 2665 on the S&P on the in the cash index here so you, you kind of see we've already made a pretty decent run. Just to get where we did was to the 38% line. That's a pretty decent move, enough to get us a light green shading. Now, we're not there. Uh, it's going to take, probably take another couple of days uh, for us to get that. So keep that in mind when we're trying to see whether or not um, whether or not we, we, we come immediately down tomorrow. Uh, but if you take a look, if I were to show you uh, the 2008 period here, to see what that looked like when we got the, the light pink shading. You can see, you know, that was the move here that eventually got the light pink shading. We actually went up and back down um, and then back up slightly by the time we got that. Again, no way we were close to a light green. Then we fell back down um, and then we got the, the rally up to the 30 day and that's where we got the light, the uh, yellow line and that was a really, really bearish pattern um, for us there. So. Are we going to get this kind of move? I mean, look and see, we got a big bullish move. We got a doji pattern, and then that followed up with a big bearish move uh, to retest the lows, not to form new lows, but to retest the lows. You know, that very well could be what we see again here, big big upward move. Uh, the difference between this one and that one was this is a, a gap that we never did fill in. So unless we unless we fill in this gap tomorrow here pretty quickly, um, that's actually really, really good. Um, sign for the markets uh, the fact that we got that gap that we didn't fill in immediately um, uh, yesterday morning once we opened so um, but of course from a market forecast perspective you can see the near-term line got above 80 and that's what we were looking for uh, it's not going to stay up there for very long it's not trend changing uh, the market forecast got up above 90 but that's not a um, you know, that's, you know, that's an extreme high, but again, don't look for that to be trend changing. Now, granted, if this were just an intermediate pullback, uh, to where the intermediate line dipped down, market sentiment was still up, kind of like right here. If that, if we would have, if we would have had that kind of a move here, 
uh, where we had the momentum line spike up to, to 90, the near term line. At that point, that would have been a really good chance that we bounce up, you know, there that that would have been a V bottom at that point. Of course, it wasn't. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with uh, Saudi Arabia and, and Russia and their spat over crude oil that created that bearish move. Um, but you know, now that we are getting that extreme high momentum line, the near term line getting above 80, I would not expect that to start a new trend. Again, create light green shading, definitely. Um, uh, but nothing more than that. And so, you know, if we do continue to move up, you can see a move up to this 2664 uh, level, and that's probably about it from a Bollinger Band perspective. You know, if you were to take a look at where, you know, the, this volume node that you've got at today's high point, um, you know, there is some resistance at the top of this node. Uh, of course, breaking through that node would get us up to this 280 area, to, you know, 271 uh, up to closer to 280. Uh, so that's, that's about where um, there's going to be some resistance level. Of course, you know, some of these other indicators... Uh, when you look at like the Ichimoku cloud, we just barely got above the green line. And, and again, to kind of show you what that looked like uh, back in 08 and 0, uh, back at that time frame when we were just barely coming off of that extreme low in October right over here. So we got that move up. That's the move that produced the light green shading. We got above the green line but and we got to the blue line. Uh, before retesting down low and see how we see how we touch that that blue line again this is when we had the yellow line on the moving average before we came down and then finally got up above the blue line uh, and stayed above the green and that's kind of where we finally solidified took a couple of months though but sign we stopped the selling pressure and abated uh, significantly by that point so go back to now the period of time here and you can see um, you know, even for us to get up to that 30, to that blue line, um, just to show you really quickly, here, let me get rid of this one, and, and here's this move uh, down to here. So to get back up to the blue line, we get us to the top of this, and again, that would about be where that 280 level is, and about where, where the 17-day moving average will be. I think that's our best case scenario for a move. I think our worst case scenario is that that's it. But this is as much of a bullish move that we'll get and we'll retest these lows. Remember, it probably won't take as long to retest them. In fact, it took a while to get to that point. It wasn't, you know, we didn't like sell off sharply. Remember, we had been slowing down to get to that point. So, you know, probably it probably won't be as big of a sell off. You can see, remember how extreme we were on this trend quality. We hadn't seen this kind of level before. It's starting to abate uh, a little bit. You look at the DMI. Uh, the DMI, which had been so extreme, um, again, uh, the ADX level getting as high as it did. Uh, the big extreme was over here, right? That was the potential V bottom. That's where, uh, here, let me do this. Let me do the, uh, the fit the studies on this so we can see it better. All right, so um, you can see that that's where the extreme was, even the, the positive directional index. And you can see now, you know, how we're really starting to make a run and the ADX is starting to move in the opposite direction. Uh, so and from a DMI standpoint, it's looking better, um, right, that these aren't, aren't so high anymore like they were over here. And that's where you get the bigger moves. So again, if we do come back down, we are a lot lower. Don't expect the same kind of moves. Expect smaller moves back down to the downside as we retest these lows. There might be one more big move uh, today like we saw in 08, um, but more smaller moves. So going back to the market forecast, um, there's the S&P 500, of course. The Russell 2000, you can see, is not even close. Again, extreme on the momentum, near-term line rallying, not even close yet to a light green shading. And it tends to have more. It's higher beta, so we can stay down more. It's red, pink lines you see are a little thicker than what you see on the S&P 500. Right, here's the S&P. There's the Russell. Oops. Um, sorry. Yeah, let's go back to. There's the S&P, and then there's the Russell. So look at the pink line, the pink, dark pink shadings. You can see they're a little thicker on the Russell than they are on the S&P. So they tend to last a little bit longer. So you can see, I mean, this one's already lasted because we haven't broken it up with the light green shading. So that's why, again, another really good sign that we'll get a light green shading here, even if it's in the short term. But 
Uh, from the Russell standpoint, we aren't even close, right? So you come down to these levels here. We haven't even hit the 38%. That's up to 1,200 roughly. Um, so there's still some opportunity, according to this index, for some short-term moves uh, to the upside. R regardless whether we short-term move to the upside or not, um, you know, it's it's going to be we're, – we're more likely going to retest these lows at some point um, here, potentially by the end of this week. It's, I mean, it's, Thursdays have been the worst day during this pullback. Uh, Mondays and Thursdays have been really bad days, which means tomorrow – and very well could be a really bad day if it follows suit um, with what we've seen in the past. Uh, and then Fridays tend to be bearish until the close, right? And then they've been rallying on, on the close uh, on some of these Fridays. So we'll see if that ends up playing out. Uh, if we break that pattern, then you can see it'll be because the Russell's got some room. There's some room for it to continue to go up. Uh, that, that would most likely mean uh, that the S&P 500 has got probably up to this 50% level, this 2665, 2670 area. Uh, if it gets into that area, uh, there's not much volume holding it back to 2800. So you know, I think if it gets in that area, we're looking at 2775 on the S&P. The doji today suggests that, that man, we may, you know, the bullishness, you know, the bulls and the bears fought a pretty good fight today. Bears were absent yesterday and not surprising. But they've fought a pretty good fight today, and that usually is short-term reversal pattern. So we'll keep our eyes on, on that uh, pattern, see how that plays out. All right, before we look at some other charts, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mouse over our logo right here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Hit the red subscribe button that pops out. There's also one down below our video if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, that will notify you when these videos are posted. Hit the thumbs up icon down below the video. That tells us two things. Number one, you liked our video today. And number two, you want us to do it again uh, tomorrow. So it's our, it's our survey. Uh, again, that's all that really matters to us. If you want us to do the video tomorrow, click the thumbs up. If you don't want us to do the vi these videos tomorrow, then don't click anything. Um, that's our, about the quickest survey you'll do. And you can do that right now while you're watching. Uh, also, while you're down there, if anything stood out to you today, let us know. Comment. Uh, people come to the website or come to the videos for the first time. Let them know uh, what, what they would get out of it if they watched the video today. Because that's usually what you do, right? You read the comment section to see, you know, what are people watching for. So comment down below. Join our website on marketscholars.com. There's a link popping out right there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link to subscribe for free. Uh, follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos from day to day. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. For, all, for um, those of you who are watching us on our website here, uh, take advantage of all the other stuff that's here on this page. Uh, Market Outlook Live video is our where we go through all the trades that we've done in past Market Outlooks and we review them. We, we trade them all the way up to the time we close because that's what matters, right? Anybody can tell you, hey, take a look at this trade or take a look at that trade. Uh, but we actually make these trades and we follow them. We manage the trades all the way. We manage them as a group. Uh, so we do that in this Market Outlook Live. We also put on today's trade ID already. Uh, it's already actually worked pretty well uh, since we put it on. Um, and we put that because the, the, that stock that we traded uh, tanked uh, like into the last 15 minutes because we do this 30 minutes uh, before the market. So in that last 15 minutes, that stock really tanked. Um, and that's the one we traded. So, uh, so we, again, there's a benefit to putting these trades on before the market closes here. Uh, there's also the calendar of all our classes. Remember, our monthly subscribers, our plus subscribers, get access to all of our classes. Uh, you get more information to that, as well as those Market Outlook Live videos. Um, these Q&A sessions you see here with Brandon, that's for our premium subscribers. So it's kind of like an online coaching session. You get to ask questions of Brandon. Uh, mine are on Saturday mornings, uh, but you can kind of get an idea of what classes we come up here. And we also invite you to engage with us on social media. Hit this heart opens up that window, you can click on that like button right there, uh, click that thumbs up. Again, the more you engage with us on those platforms, the more those platforms will, will push our content to you. They don't push you all the content that you follow because they can't, there's too much. Uh, but they do with, for the content that you engage with the most. We try to make it really easy for you to do that here. All right, back to the charts. Uh, you can see the weekly chart um, that's, that's coming up here. Uh, there's the PPO dropping as, as significant as it is. Look how bullish the weekly chart is. That's on the regular candles. If you look at the Hakanyashi candle, you know, again, closing above last week's low point will be significant. Um, and now, and, and it's also set a new low point. So again, and we're well off of that because we're at 2475. We're way up here right now. Um, we're, in fact, 
we're pretty darn close right now to where next week's open will be. Um, so, you know, that type of move right here. That's really, really significant for us. Now, whether, you know, obviously, I highly doubt we're going to close the week. we got two more days left uh, at, tw- at 24.75. But even if we rally to- or we close tomorrow down and then we rally up on Friday or vice versa and we close around here, because, again, the midpoint of the candles where next week's open will be, so probably around 25.20-ish in that area. Um, so, I mean, that's the type of candle that that's the reversal candle. Um, but even if we don't, even if we just get, you know, if we continue, we retest these lows, uh, as long as we close up above this low point, we're fine. Um, still bearish, still retesting lows, uh, might take a week or two uh, of more of these kind of candles, but it just means that we're like the pressure, the onslaught to the downside is over with. Now it's just a matter of, you know, kind of backfilling here and, and giving people, you know, as I mentioned before in my tweet, uh, if you didn't know, if you didn't see the tweet I put out there, I put a lot of tweets out there yesterday, uh, but this is one, um, let's see here, right here. So if you missed this one, uh, there's that concept of, well, if you if you miss the top 10 days in the market, you're you're going to miss out on on half your return. If only 10 days, right? You miss out on half your return. But the reality is if the the those top 10 days were all just the markets were ext- like we talked about on Monday. We're extremely far away from the moving averages. Uh, on Monday we talked about the potential for a historic day that we got the very next day. Um, well, that's because we were extremely far away. In fact, it's the number nine now, uh, all time. Uh, yet Tuesday's move was a number nine all time upward move. But even if you missed all these days, these are the these in that period that she mentioned. These are the top ten days. All of these nine of these days, the market retraced those moves. So if you missed it the first time, then you had second chances, right? Except for the one that was the low point, March 09. Uh, which was a, a, a um, runaway gap like we potentially had uh, yesterday. So we'll see. We'll see if that ends up. But all the rest of them, we retraced all those moves. So, so yeah, we might not get this kind of a candle. And if we do, right back to the 200-day moving average, right? But more than likely, we might have a week or two more of these kind of bearish candles uh, where the bodies start getting smaller, uh, but we stay within the range, and then we reverse back to the fit, you know, back up to that orange line, the 50-day moving average. Uh, so we'll see. And again, we'll give you the opportunity if you missed out on Tuesday's move to do it again. Uh, might not be as fast the next time. It won't be historic, um, but the, the the drop down to these lows won't be as fast either. Uh, let's take a look at the three green arrow chart, and you'll notice, hey, a green arrow. Look at that, the MACD is giving us green arrow big move to the upside uh, which is again a sign that we might be kind of done here but uh, big move to the upside if you look at on the two line version uh, we got we didn't quite get to the 17 day moving average we almost did and tomorrow we're probably depending upon where we open and where we trade um, right now the 17 day moving average at 260.52 it was at 262 and a quarter the day before that so you know, if we're falling down, if it falls down another point, about 259, or right around 260, and that's where we open up, then, you know, we'll kind of keep an eye on that because it's a pretty good chance that we don't break that 17-day moving average the first time that we test it. See, we didn't test it up there. We just got above the 8, but we didn't test the 17. This, this first time we test the 17, now we could break it. More than likely, like, again, in 2008, we didn't. Uh, we didn't break it the first go-around. Uh, it... It held the first time up um, right here. You can see we got up, we opened up right at it, and then came down and started the retest. So, you know, after that, that's really that was one of the that's one of the biggest moves that we've ever had right there. Uh, that gain. So same thing. It we 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 kind of tested the eight day over here, um, but then but then we finally got up above and and we and we opened up at the seventeen and held it the first time. Uh, the second go around we didn't. That's when we got to the 30. Um, so I can't, you know, as you can see, we got a green arrow. Look, we got a green arrow on the MACD. Um, this not right on this move, but on this move here, but not enough to get us to the, you know, through the 17 day. And we rolled over again. So I kind of expect the same thing to happen here. We 
you know, we got above the eight. It's great. We're so low. We're probably going to, you know, we got a green arrow on the MACD. Stochastic still, seller still in control. Um, probably going to hit that 17 day and roll back over. You know, roll back over to the downside. I would be glad. To, I mean, it would be nice if we got up to the 30. Uh, if we got a good, strong series of moves, up and down moves, you know, a good string of these, um, of these green candles here. Um, one second. There we go. If we got a good string of some green candles, great. More than likely, that's not going to be the case. More than likely, we're going to, you know, get some. But you notice here again. Go back to our favorite comparison time frame. Um, <clears throat> here we go. I was watching a video today that 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 it was, you know, today's market and what to do now. And and most of the video was was going back in in the past and looking at all these historical bear markets and. And once we got to the question of, okay, what do we do now? The, the answer was, watch our education videos. And it's like, oh, man, you didn't even, you know, what, what was the answer? What, what, what's what we do now? All right, well, you know, so here, you know, I'm showing you the past, but I'm showing you, like, what it did in the past and how that might compare to right now. So hopefully you do come out of these videos with what you can do now as we do that. Uh, but you notice here, again, we were way down, the implied volatility had dropped way below, but the historical volatility stayed elevated and the and the implied jumped back up. So on the retest, the implied volatility jumped back up. We got that big upward move and we just weren't able to sustain this good series until later and even there. But you notice now that this, the, you notice on these retests here, on this, even on this retest, um, but especially on this one and then over here, you notice how we had these big sell-offs and then a lot smaller at that point. The sell-offs got a lot smaller. And we had a couple bigger ones there, but then but then you notice, look at the selling getting a lot smaller on these retests. Um, all the way out to the low point that we had. Much, much smaller than we had here as eventually the historical volatility dropped sharply by the time we formed the low point. Uh, over there. Well, if I look at right now to see, okay, well, where are we at right now? Right now, we are sharply below the historical that's holding up pretty high. I don't necessarily think that we're going to get all the way, like the implied volatility is going to jump all the way up to 94%. That'd be nuts. More than likely, we're going to jump closer to 80% again as we retest these lows with smaller moves, probably in these 4 or 5% ranges uh, to the downside. Um, but they're going to look smaller because we've had such big downward moves um, and so that's kind of what I expect uh, to see again may if we got to the 30-day moving average which by then will probably be right around this area that would be great um, we'd have the sell it we'd have the kind of bearish opportunity of a lifetime from a short-term perspective if that happened more than likely we're gonna come back down uh, here at the 17 day it'd be nice if we opened up tomorrow higher um, and then we'll probably come back down, retest these lows over a shorter amount of time, get that implied volatility up closer to historical again, um, then bounce back, you know, then it will come back down, we'll come bounce up, maybe hit the 30 day at that point, which will have come down a lot lower. Kind of, that's that's the, the story arc, right? Remember, the, the characters, the details change, but the story is the same. No matter whether it's Hercules or whatever hero movie, Harry Potter you like to look at, the story arc might be different. Or might it, the details might be different. The characters might be different. The character here is coronavirus, and in 2008 it was the real estate and financial crisis. Uh, much different characters, but the story arc is the same. We got this big sell-off, uh, lots of volatility, and now it's settled down. And now comes the retest, right? A retest of these low points. One thing to kind of caveat on that is that if you watch the TV, everybody's talking about the retest. I actually tweeted that out yesterday too, that everybody's talking about, we're going to retest these lows. Um, so it's like, you know, expect that. But I will tell you, like if we got back down below 2200, if we got closer to 2100, I will guarantee you people will be going nuts on TV and talking about how, we're, you know, the Great Depression. It's like, you just told us a few days ago to expect that. Now that we actually get it, you're going nuts again? Don't go nuts again. You, it, it should be normal. So that's why I think that if everybody's expecting it, there's a, we could, you know, again, the market doesn't always do what everybody expects. We might... That might be what pushes us up to 2800 because everybody's expecting us to roll over here at 2600. So we might go up a little bit further and faster and do something kind of unexpected. So while that's the lower probability uh, possibility, don't discount it completely. 
Uh, and if it did, remember, because then at that point, people will be talking about V bottoms, right? And then that's when we can really sell it uh, short because we want to be con kind of contrarian there. All right, let's take a look at the four at the intraday. You can see so this and I, I, I tweeted this out today that if we do end up peaking here, you know, I tweeted out actually I tweeted out while we were over in this this time frame earlier today that there's some resistance from last week's high point. Um, the top end of this volume node, right around 260. Again, we might open up there for all we know. Uh, we might open up in that area right around 260. Um, but if we do, that's where the 17 day will be tomorrow especially. Um, very well could, could come down. And again, we have all this volume to slog through now. The, f the first time we came down here, there was no volume uh, on the four week chart especially. But now there is a lot of volume. Uh, coming down here, so that's why it takes. That's why the second go around is a lot slower than the first go around because a lot more volume. Um, buyers and sellers going to battle it out a little bit, but but again, if we do the unexpected and break through, you can see getting above 260. There's not. We won't just stop at 267. Um, there's a chance, but more than likely we'll come all the way up to this volume note up towards that 280, filling in the rest of this gap, filling in the rest of that gap right there. Uh, and potentially even in some of that gap. Um, um, but you notice there's that runaway gap that we haven't seen like, you know, that that runaway gap, we didn't see that in October or November of 2008. We didn't see a gap like that until March of 2009. And that was the one day out of the top 10 up days that we didn't retrace. All right, now we might retrace into some of the day there, but not all the way down to that low point. Um, so keep, you know, and then just kind of keep that in mind. That's, that's a really good sign. Um, but I, I don't, I think this will get filled in. Just like I thought these would get filled in and this one, um, you know, and I think these eventually will get filled in. I think that one will get filled in too at some point. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be by the end of the week, but it might be within the next week or two that we fill in that gap right there. All right. So not the runaway gap. It's too early for a runaway. If it is a runaway gap and we v bottom this bad boy, then like I said before, heaven help us. Um, but um, it's too early for a runaway gap. We want to have a good retest and a good couple of months and bring the moving averages down, the 50 and the 30 down. Um, then you know start to converge on those eight and 17 days with the 30. Then give me a runaway gap to the upside that we don't fill in like we did March 10th, and away we go from that point. Here, let's take a look at today's volume and trading range. Um, you can see the volume, you know, we, the last two days have been the first two days that we haven't had one and a half times. I mean, even that one was really darn close, but these not so close. So these two really are the first two days that we didn't have one and a half times the average volume. That average is really rising pretty sharply. In fact, yesterday we barely had above average volume. That's crazy to think, but yesterday we barely had above average volume. Today we had a little bit above average volume. That average being at 226 million there. And then of course the trading range a little bit above the average. And um, you know that's just, you know, that's, that's an interesting development here. You can see when you look at it from this perspective, um, when you look at it from that perspective, you can see the ATR is really, really high. It's kind of peaking here at 6%. I showed you on Monday how extreme that is. Um, there it is kind of ba you know, basing at 15 points. Remember, that's an apples to apples comparison. This is the relative comparison here. And then there's your average volume. And so eventually we're going to start getting below average volume. That average is going to start coming down. Let me show you again 08 and 09, right? Of where that happened there. So, you know, this is where it peaked. And we still stay pretty high as we retested the lows. Um, and then we hit that 30 day moving average. We were starting to come down. And you can see by the time we, we really, you know, the, by the time we set the low point over here, the volume and the ATR had come way off these extreme levels. Right now, granted, we were only at six point something or other. Uh, which is about right here uh, back then. So uh, you know this is this is about where we are. If this if this is a comparable period of time as to where we are now, um, you know we were at 6.48 there, and we're just over six right now. So there's a good chance this ATR still continues to run up. This one's you know we we have kind of peaked here, 
um, but we might not be done. So, and keep in mind too, there's a good chance that this comes down closer to 3% and this comes down um, of quite a bit of ways before we finally get the low point, right? And same thing with the volatility index. The volatility index I showed you, it dropped down, but remember the historical volatility is still pretty high. So a good chance that we can run up. Now here's a good sign for us. As much as volatility ramped up here, 3.7%, if you look at VXV um, today, or VIX three months, so VIX 3M, um, you can see it, you know, it kind of went up to the same amount. And if you look at the ratio um, of VIX to VXV, you know, you see how it kind of hasn't come up as much. Um, and it's really pulled back from these 80 levels down to 55. So what that means is, is that the market now is putting a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's looking more short term, uh, right? We had come down here and then and back in 2008 when we bounced back up to this 120 level, we bounced back up, the market was retesting low points. We're not retesting low points yet and the VIX has already bounced back up. So again, another side, because when it gets up to this level, again, let me show you that 2008 uh, time frame again. So, so I can, we can see what happened with that, 2008 to 2009. Um, you can see here, when it came down, we, we, we got that big move up. See, uh, this is the little difference there is, is when we, when we retest, when we had that big extreme move up, we were still way high on the VIX to VXV. Um, this is the move that brought us down towards one. We've already come down. It was in November. We've already come down. It was by the time we got that, that cluster on November the 20th, that's what brought the VXV up to this 120%. And you can see when it gets high, it comes back down. Well, again, you know, so again, we might not be V bottoming right now. We might hit that 280 level. We might be doing what um, kind of later in November instead of later in October, later in November there because of we've already jumped back up to 120%, which means, and we've already come down to one, we've jumped back up to 120%, which means there's a good chance this comes back down. And as it comes back down, um, that generally means volatility comes down. That generally means markets, right? So kind of another one of those kind of signs that we might not do what everybody expects and hit 260 and roll back down. We might jump up towards 280 um, and hit that 30-day moving average uh, quicker than what people expect uh, and sucker people into thinking the V bottom before we roll back over and start retesting and bring this back down towards one again and then rally back up on volatility on the retest. All right, so before we look at some of these other asset classes and some other charts, uh, comparison charts, uh, just a quick summary on the technical outlook. So uh, we got the extreme historic move that we were looking for on Monday. We got that Tuesday and I didn't, you know, I didn't expect we'd get it that quick, but um, I had, well, I didn't know it could have been that quick and we said it could have been Tuesday, but it could have been today or tomorrow too. Uh, but we already got it. We got it on Tuesday. So we're about the selling pressure has abated. As we said on Monday, it looked like it was going to abate. It was starting to abate. Well, it's abated. So it doesn't mean that we can't retest. But now the, this, the, ser the, the urgency, the, the pressure is lessened considerably. Um, so it won't go down as hard now. Um, so it won't look like, you know, the world's going to end every time we pull back. Um, but, and we are bouncing, and, and, and there's a good chance we retest these lows. It's kind of what everybody's looking for. So keep the door open for the possibility that we don't do what everybody's expecting, and we keep going up uh, towards this 280. But remember, when, when the Fed announced QE, when the Fed announced TARP, the stock markets didn't rally right after those things. And stock markets actually fell quite a, quite a bit after all those things were announced. So just because the stimulus package gets passed, just because... Um, you know, the Fed has announced QE, Q infinity, um, doesn't mean that we're going to go up. That might sucker some people into thinking that, and that's, that's what might push us through to 280. But what we saw in the past is the markets actually dropped pretty hard after those things were announced in the, in the 2008 crisis. Uh, again, buy the rumor, sell the news kind of a thing. So, uh, so we'll see how that plays out this go around and, and more than likely again, as these things kind of come out, because again, we're going to get a, the, what, there's a good quote that says the market, bear markets don't end on good news, bear markets end on bad news. 
with the idea being that the market stops going down on bad news. We still got a lot of bad news left to go. A lot of bad news left to go. We have bad GDP prints, we have bad employment numbers, we have bad quarterly results. We got a lot of bad news to, to come, right? So the market's gonna drop on some of this bad news, but eventually it's gonna stop dropping on the bad news, and that's gonna be the low point, right? That's when we know we're, we're done retesting lows and we're ready to get going again. So the mar bear markets don't end on good news, um, like we're getting right now, like we're getting with the Fed, QE, and all that. The market, the bear markets don't end on good news. Bear markets end on bad news. Uh, so we've got a lot of bad news left. Over the next quarter, we're going to have a lot of bad news left. So don't think, uh, this won't be a V-bottom. If it is, heaven help us. But most likely it's not going to be a V-bottom. So that's kind of what we're looking at. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Disagree? There's a link popping out right there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link. Opens up a poll. Hit either agree or disagree. If you click disagree, comment down below as to why. Are you a lot more bullish? Are you a lot more bearish? Um, so, you know, maybe you think the selling pressure is going to really rebound again. Whatever. Whatever you disagree about, what we just came up with here, share what drives that opinion. What chart are you looking at? What indicator are you using? What macro indicator are you seeing that would suggest otherwise? And share that with our community of watcher, market outlook viewers here down below. All right, so really quickly, I did want to take a look at what's you know, some of these other asset classes. So let's come here to the asset comparison chart. Um, and let's look at the last, um, really the last, let's see. Well, let's just look at the last two days, this last little rally that we've had. Um, so we'll go to a custom chart, come over here to March, and look at a 10 minute. So here's the bullishness that we've had. So we started bearish. Um, actually, no, we need to go to um, not Monday. We need to go to right here. There we go, from the open. So we started up, we gapped up to the upside, and then we really rallied up and closed higher, and then we rallied and pulled back late. Um, so despite that we're still up over these last couple of days more almost 11 percent in stocks even though we came down from our highs preferred stocks doing really really well um, real estate stocks interestingly enough REITs um, doing really well during the bounce back that's probably not the stocks you want us the asset classes you want us to lead to the way higher you notice small cap stocks have been lagging behind large caps again not the best ratio or best scenario high yield is outpacing treasuries that's good Gold is still up with the dollar being down. That's actually really good. The dollar has been really bouncing up sharply here. Um, here, let's take a let me just uh, detach this and look at the dollar on a separate chart uh, here. And we'll look at the market forecast chart and take a look at the dollar index. Um, you notice, I mean, we have been really going up sharply. And so, this pullback is not a trend changing pullback, this is just an overbought pullback um, that we're getting. So we are pulling back down towards 100. There's going to be some support uh, right around 100. And you know, we do have some really significantly um, bearish short-term sentiment, but again, not trend changing, at least not yet. So uh, we'll see how this ends up playing out and what these Hakanyashi candles, see if we turn into a bullish trend here pretty quickly. Um, but it is a good sign. Remember, markets are more bullish when the dollar is bearish. So here's the long-term chart for the dollar. Um, so if we're looking for the markets to be more bullish, we need, so here's 2008, right? So there's where we peaked in, in this, in October, December, January, 2008, and there's the March repeat, um, uh, repeat, uh, of the dollar. So it's hard for the markets to be, um, too bullish when you have a strong bullish trend developing. And you can see we're kind of actually just starting this bullish trend, but we've actually been bullish. So, so that, you know, again, there's. I tweeted this out too. Um, if you if again follow me on Twitter, I put a lot of stuff out there in the last couple of days. But this guy, this guy right here, says um, stocks have been in the bear market. This could be the finishing move that marks its end. Now I've been telling you that how long now that we've been in this stealth bear market for quite a while. In the and this and f since January 2018. We've been in this stealth bear market for the dollar, and because it's or for the market for risk appetite, and the dollar's been rallying. And the only reason why we don't think it has been a bear market is because the Fang stocks have been rallying. But you can see the dollar's been pretty mo moving up pretty well. Again, very similar to where we peaked here um, in in 08 uh, for the dollar, and then rallied and had a big move at the end. Well, this very well could be the big move at the end uh, for the dollar rally, kind of a head and shoulders type pattern. 
um, before we roll back over. So I don't think we're going to get that type of move right now. I think this is the you know this we're at the end of that move uh, right now for the strength uh, in the dollar. And we'll get a, a, a pull back to the downside, which is typically pretty bullish. I mean the market the stock market peaked way over here in October of 07 is where the stock market peaked right here as where this so we had a bearish move um, when when the dollar goes down there's oper there's that's when the markets tend to be more bearish so we'll kind of keep our eyes on this level um, if we do really break out here if we don't break out um, you know if you look at like the Bollinger Bands um, we'll take a look at uh, for the volume profile but we'll look at UUP instead uh, so there's UUP obviously breaking way out ob above the the um, the one standard deviation. Let me get rid of this expiring code so it doesn't flatten the chart so much. But there's the one, there's the ten year, and you can see how bearish um, this how how bearish this or bullish this move was, breaking out of this volume node and really taking off here. Um, and then there's our twenty year. So um, you know, see how significant uh, this this kind of breakout move is. If we do start to trend higher on the dollar, kind of for a good long period of time that won't necessarily be the most bullish uh, and if and if for whatever reason it is um, like we saw pretty much in the late 90s then tech stocks US tech stocks um, you know they led the way higher they generally lead when the markets are bullish with a strong dollar uh, so we'll expect the apples and the Facebook's of the world uh, those Microsoft's those types of stocks the fang stocks that led us up during this bullish move on the dollar uh, here this past year, we'll expect them to continue to lead the way forward uh, if that's the case. More than likely, the dollar will, will start its decline. Um, the other significant move, and you can kind of see on a linear regression um, what, what the dollar is doing here on with this strong move. I mean, big. It's, it's, it's kind of hard for the dollar to make a big you know, standard deviation move like that, and that's why it's kind of so significant here uh, how bearish this is um, but the other the other significant is uh, pattern that you see is this bonds um, as bullish as they've been they're still very extreme and still opportunity for uh, again for us to be bearish again on this safety trade safety trades still very overbought on a long-term basis and and so it kind of shows how much bullish potential we're going to have as this safety trade unwinds. Uh, very similar to an end of a bear market. When the safety trade gets really bullish over a long term, well, that's what we have. The safety trade has been really bullish since pretty much October of 18. Um, this had a good run. And so it's extreme, and now it's to an extreme now. Very similar to what the end of a bear market looks like. Doesn't mean that today's a low point. It doesn't mean that yesterday was a low point or tomorrow will be the low point. It still might be a month or two away, but we're building a base for a really good long-term move to come out of it. Here's the um, here's the the charts for the sectors over the last two days. Energy and industrials. Like energy has been like the worst sector you could possibly be invested in. Right? Industrials. I mean, that's like your Boeing's of the world. Um, you know, look how bullish those thought, those industries are. Financials really rallying too. They've been beaten up. Uh, there's materials, um, real estate uh, stocks have been doing better here. Um, so I mean, they've they've all and there's utilities. I mean, look at you, even all the way up to the very end. You had utilities, uh, financials, utilities, and real estate. That's not really industries you typically put together. But they've all rallied. They're all outpacing. Whereas your communication services, your consumer stocks, technology, all, for the most part, lagging. So as we saw before, when we rallied, um, these kind of bearish rallies. I mean, this is not what we want to lead the way higher. We want these at cyclical uh, sectors, the discretionaries, the technologies, the communication services, because it has like the Netflixes and the Googles and the Facebooks of the world, Disney. You know, we want all those to lead the way higher. So again, kind of shows that don't get suckered into thinking that this is the low point, and because that's not how this is. You know, and we're not gonna. Hopefully, energy doesn't lead us into the next. You know, our returns for the next year, because that's really not the sector we want to be in right now.
All right, and that leads us to our trade idea of the day. And just really quickly, since the video is kind of, uh, we're kind of long here, we took a look at Amazon. We're looking at a bearish trade for Amazon because Amazon has bounced back up like you'd expect earlier than some other stocks. It hit its low point over here on March the 16th. It's been rallying ever since, but rallied up to the top of this volume note to this value area. If it breaks out, great. More than likely not going to break out, right? More than, unless the market breaks out, which again, V bottoms are still, I wouldn't d completely discount it. Uh, but there's a good chance Amazon pulls back down towards its point of control and lower as we retest low points. And so we looked at a trade for Amazon to sell those 1720 put, which is right around the 20 delta, buy the 1725 put. Uh, our risk here, we put a full position size at risk. Uh, the spreads are pretty wide, so it's kind of been flirting with good gains and, and the loss that it has right now uh, on the stock. But the stock, as you can see, since we got into the trade, um, we got into the trade here at, at the, you know, right around the 145 mark, uh, right in this area, and, you know, it closed the day down. It bounced up a little bit after hours, but, you know, that big move to the downside, uh, that's why we like to do these Market Outlook Live videos. We'll put these trades on earlier. So we've actually kind of in this area uh, as a stock, you know, we were hit, you know, the low point, what, 1885. You know, we were kind of in this 1885 level. Uh, and, and we're flirting with some big gains and losses. And, and keep in mind, when you do, if you make that trade, it's a really expensive stock, so it's got really wide spreads because of that. So we actually got a really decent price uh, for that. And like I said, position size around the uh, a full position size. So if it keep, continues to go up, uh, kind of like what we did with Microsoft. If Microsoft really broke down, great. If it bounced up, then we take a, you know, we take a loss, take a small loss. Same thing here. If this bounces up and breaks out, we'll take a small loss of a half a, you know, potentially five. That's what we did with Microsoft is we took a loss in our Market Outlook Live video of half a normal position. But for a $4,000 reward, for $500 of risk, we'll take it. And it's the same, exact same principle here on Amazon, taking advantage of this case. Unlike Microsoft, where we were looking for it to break support, here we're looking for it to bounce down from resistance. If it breaks out, small loss. If it bounces down, really good reward. All right, well, that wraps us up for today. You've heard from me now. Now I want to hear from you. Use that link that's popping out in the top right corner of your screen. It takes you to our Market Outlook forums on our website at marketscholars.com. Open up any new thread on our forum uh, with any questions or comments you have today and respond to anybody else's thread as well. Um, and we can keep this conversation going between videos. Again, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon on the video. And... Um, and comment uh, down below. Follow me on Twitter for more content between videos and join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created as well as our website at marketscholars.com. Again, have a great rest of your evening, everybody, and we'll see you all tomorrow.